That brings us to year number eight, Mark. Great Thank song, Bob. Right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the word charming notwithstanding, that is an awesome song. <laughs> um, Mike, look, watching this, I, I, I love you, man. Love your music, but I still don't like the word charming in a heavy metal song. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't bother me enough that I would leave it off of my off of my top songs. Where, um, very commercial sounding, but very heavy at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, it's got those lyrics that can be interpreted secularly or religiously, uh, which they were brilliant at doing. Uh, the videos, you know, definitely goes toward more toward the secular side about a relationship between a a guy and a girl, um, but it's just a, I love the, the heavy riff in that song. Um, again, Robert's drums are just thunderous. Um, it's, it's a great song. It, it could be a radio hit if, if anybody played Striper on the radio these days, which nobody does. Um, just love that song. And, and that's it, Mark. You know, a song doesn't have to be uh, like an epic or anything. It is kind of simplistic in its structure, but man, it's got a hook that's, you know, uh, more hooks than a bass fishing tournament. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. absolutely. That's why I loved it. That's why it's in my list too. Great yeah, song. Very song. hooky. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, very hooky. <laughs> Mr. Lee, what's your what's your number eight? Right. So, it's time for another ballad. <laughs> ballad time in my best of hits, whatever you call it. So. Can't live without your love. Man, you love, well, obviously you agree with that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely outstanding song. I love the way when it first goes into the, to Michael singing. It just has got some sort of ballad -y groove to it that it just feels so cool that song it's got a real good feeling to it I can't explain it it's a it's a strange one but um it's definitely one of the one of their better ballads they've ever done you know um Can't Live Without Your Love is a great song on one of my not so one you know it's, it's a great album as well but out we've spoken about like the the four albums, haven't we? The the recent four. Mm -hmm. it, it is my least favourite album, but it's got some really good songs within it. You know, some some cool, really cool songs. But um, can't live without your love is a great ballad. Absolutely brilliant. That's my number eight, mate. Yeah, that was just done done right. Um, yeah. Like you're saying, Lee, you can't hardly put the words on it. All he can say is that when Michael was laying down that vocal track, he was feeling it. You know, he was yeah. feeling the message of that song. Great delivery. Excellent choice. Rex, buddy, what's your number eight? Um, another song from the album Fallen that I think kind of for some reason gets overlooked. Um, and the song is Heaven. Um, I really like that song. Um, another kind of mid-tempo-ish uh, type of song. But just uh, for me, it, I really like that song. Yep. It's a good great, one. Great song. <laughs> okay, guys, my number eight is Do Unto Others. Uh, I think everybody, Rex hasn't yet, but I know that uh, Mark and, and Lee, y'all have Do Unto Others as my number eight. I think y'all said everything about it. I do believe it's Striker's newest anthem. It's, 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 it's anthemic in its nature. So uh, the repentance uh, in my storyline here, uh, we make love great again. He's, he's, he's repenting inside. This repentance is continued in this song. Uh, if we would think of each other, maybe we would heal, not suffer. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So he is, our character is... Uh, seeing what, what needs to happen within this repentance between him and his significant other. If we would think of each other, maybe we would heal not suffer. That's my number eight. And uh, I think we've all expressed our sentiments about that one. I think we agree it's a good song. Mr. Mark, you're number nine, buddy. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going all the way back to the beginning of this. Uh, something. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just I uh, I had sent Ken a message when he when he said we were going to start this at 2005, and I I jokingly asked if I could sneak one in from 2003. Um, this is the song, one of the two new songs on the seven uh, greatest hits album that they released in 2003. I think they were testing the waters to see, you know, if there was any interest in a reunion or any interest in new striker music at the time. Uh, this song is a, to me, it's a hybrid between the old and the new. The guitar tone harkens back to, to Hell of the Devil, but it also has elements of what they were getting ready to do on Reborn. Um, I, it's, a, it's a good combination of those two styles. Um, it, it's just, it's one you don't hear anything about. Most people have forgotten it. Um, it probably would not appear on a true album if they did, if they did release the greatest hits of the modern era, I doubt it would be on it, but um, I like it enough to include it on that. And that's why we're doing this, Mark. I mean, you stated every reason why you would put it on there and, you know, and it's our personal, personal best of and everything, you know, and something and for you in a lot of the songs on Reborn and about a little less maybe than half of Murder by Pride, they always, uh, there, there's several that had a, like a collective soul uh, feel to them, kind of the way they did their music. And, uh, you know, it's that modern rock, but uh, yeah. anyway, but no, that's, that's totally cool, man. It's got, uh, a, it's got a funky sound to it, <laughs> uh, which is kind of not your typical striker sound by any means. Right. They obviously dabbled in that when they covered uh, Shining Star. Yeah. You know, you can hear some pretty funky Tim Gaines bass on this one too, which makes me question whether, you know, they had, you know, they had Randy Jackson play on uh, Shining yep. Star because they, they said Tim just couldn't, couldn't get the funk down. But uh, he, I think he did well on this version. So that makes me question, you know, I think he probably could have pulled it off on Shining Star, but for whatever reason, they just decided to go in another direction. Yeah. Shining Star was excellent. Um, uh, Anyway, all right, so, yeah, good good choice then, something for your number nine. Um, yeah, a little bit out of left field, but that's cool, though. I mean, you know, you've explained, explained why, and uh, uh, anyway, Lee, what's your number nine, buddy? So I've got one. I think two of you have chosen this already, and that's Sorry of a Goddamn Evil. So um, my favorite part of this song, though, is the charming lyric. I think it's the best thing <laughs> We'll have to call Mark Prince Charming as a nickname or something, you know, you just to just to keep it. Uh, no, man, everyone sort of said what they, you know, the, the yeah. full chorus sort of reminds me, but it's like a better version of Four Leaf Clover. It's that sort of running chorus. Um, I'm not saying it's the same, but it's got that sort of soaring sort of running chorus, just like Four Leaf Clover did, but an updated and much better version for me. Um, a great song. Absolutely love it. Sorry's uh, my number nine. Great pick. Love that too, man. Rex, your number nine, buddy. Yeah, so we're up to the album, Goddamn Evil, and I'm going with the title track. Um, just a good rock song, I mean, you can jam out to that. The <clears throat> guitars sound wonderful. Um, you know, just just a, another great Striper song. Yep. It, 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 did y'all think, did, did the licks in that song and the, and the tone, did it kind of remind y'all a little bit of ACDC at first, maybe? Yeah. yeah. A little, yeah. It I, think a, I think it's really cool that Rex is choosing, at the moment, has chosen a few songs left field, if you like, but, you know, but, uh, but that just shows you that, that Striper, you know, what their variation in their music. Because yeah. a lot of bands, you know, a lot of people like in this sort of conversation about certain bands would only talk about, would all choose the same sort of songs, you know, the hits and the ones that everyone likes. It just shows you what their appeal is, then that other people can choose songs, the deeper cuts that don't appeal to other people. I think it's a cool thing. And sometimes I'm just like that, Lee. I, you know, 
sometimes I don't know if I just I'm burnt out sometimes with some of those other songs and not that they're not great songs but especially those songs I picked from Fallen um, th those songs and No More Hell to Pay those ones were the ones that like kind of like grabbed me like I just was like oh yeah from the first time I heard them I'm like I like that song so and, and like you said it's just a personal thing but <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, they, they have a lot of different music there that, you know, is just <clears throat> awesome. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this. It is everybody's personal, personal wish list of what they'd expect to find on a modern best of, uh, album package. So guys, my number nine, uh, can't live without your love. Uh, nice. for starters, no bones about it. It's the best power ballad written in the 21st century by anybody. <laughs> no, I, I think it is a, an awesome power ballad. Lee's already said so much about it, so I won't say much more. It's, just, it's in there. It's in my list. In my storyline now, after, after our central character, the, the, the repentance inside uh, of doing unto others, so now he is acting physically with this repentance inside that our central character is restoring his relationship uh, to his significant other uh, after listening to the Lord's, uh, you know, touching his heart about it. And he goes up to her and here's the lyrics. Girl, I've got to tell you something that I don't ever say enough. You took my life from next to nothing when I was down and things were rough. So things were going rough in this relationship. And uh, through pre previous songs, he was quickened about, hey, you've got this, uh, you know, when people get in a tip or a row, pride creeps in, right? Well, I'm going to show them and I'm going to do this and all, whatever. Well, then, you know, elsewhere in the storyline, we get to the songs like Revelation and Sorry. Hey, you can't just say you're sorry. You've got you to repent. You've got to mean it. You've got to show it. And so now we're down to this song, uh, Can't Live Without Your Love. And he finally, he's, he's being obedient to God and he's going to his girl and saying, you know, I don't ever say this enough. You know, you, you took my life from next to nothing when I was down and, and, and things were rough. So that's, that's step one of acting on this re repentance that I'm talking about. And we'll stop right there and go to our song choice number 10. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mark. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm going with Blood from Above. Uh, this one this one took a little bit of growing on me. Uh, but when it grew, it really grew. Uh, probably the the heaviest, fastest song they've done recently. Uh, definitely probably the heaviest on my list here. Uh, just I pedal to the metal, kick the door wide open, way to open an album. Um, just bombastic is the only, only thing I can think to describe it as. Um, just, what about the first time you heard the time signature change in that, Mark? Remember when yeah, it was released? That, that's, it's, their, their complexity that they interject into some of these songs, they're just, they're so far ahead of most bands, you know, even from the 80s or even now. Um, you know, they just, they get pigeonholed as the, you know, the Christian band, but nobody really gives them the credit they deserve as musicians. I mean, they're just, the way they, those transitions in these songs, and they're just, they're just on another level. They yeah. really are. I've got to, got to say that that, that song, well, it's done a lot for me and all. I mean, I got to talk to Michael Sweet basically because of that song. Yeah. You know, that's amazing for me yeah. because of that, that was that reaction video I did and he saw it, you know. So that started a lot of things for me that, you know, it made me talk to someone I admire so much. Well, so that does mean a lot to me, that song. You know, it's such a great song, man. That's how I found yeah. you. Exactly. And, like, you know, I mean, we said about the other day, didn't we? We would say about, like, I know I'm, I was probably the first one years ago to say, like, about having friends online and it's just a bit weird <laughs> you know what i mean but man it's true it's true especially during like all these times i know you're you guys are way over 
over the pond than that. But you know, I mean, I speak to you guys more than I speak to my my friends now. <laughs> And, you know, on that note, and this is what's cool, you know, uh, which Lee, we, Rex and I were fans of your channel. You know, we used to message each other, hey, have you seen this guy? You know, and he's got some, he's doing these striper uh, uh, videos, you know, uh, reactions and stuff. And then, of course, Mark being a regular on there and everything and seeing seeing you guys and whatnot. And, and, uh, and I just think that it's cool how, like today, now, Lee, we've, we've become friends with you. We've spoken and done a few episodes, and you know. But see, Mark even seems like an old friend. This is Mark's first time on, on this channel. Yeah. But to me, Mark seems like an old friend because I've watched many, many an episode with you two and, and with Darren, you know, and uh, it's just natural. <laughs> so it's cool. It's so, the beauty of music. Yeah. Yes, yes. So – Okay, so Mark, your your number ten was Blood from Above. What was your ten, Lee? So from the same album, um, probably the catchiest song they brought out for a long time, and that's Invitation Only. I mean, what? I mean, if you want to hark back to their most melodic eighties, I know it was an eighties song, although it. Well, in, in fact, it wasn't. It was a nineties song, wasn't it? Because it was off. It was. Of against it was nineteen eighty nine. Oh, 89, sorry. It was in between, that was done in between uh, In God We Trust and Against the Law. Well, I can hear a lot of more In God We Trust to tell you the truth than yeah. Against the Law, but it's a lot better than, in my opinion, most of the songs on In God We Trust. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, uh, and that's probably to do with the production as well. It's got more meat behind it. Um, at the same time as being so melodic, it's got that modern production that Michael Sweet's bringing into the band and it's just that is another song that hit me straight away with the catchiness got that I wish it was a little bit louder actually but a little bit of keyboards in the background there on that chorus mm -hmm. it's, you can hear it but it's very much in the background I would have minded that a little bit you know a tiny little bit up in the mix but apart from that man it's a great song so catchy and, and yes, everything you said about it, Lee, I concur. So here's the neat thing about invitation only. With with this second coming too that we're we're hearing about. Think about invitation only being written, you know, around the time because it was in between in God We Trust and Against the Law. So think about the production on this great song, Invitation Only. And mm -hmm. how it seems to fit in with the In God We Trust mold. So, boy, doesn't that whet your appetite for the In God We Trust songs and the production for a second coming too? See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there's any, if there's any b albums that, you know, I, I, I could do with, we spoke about this the other day, I could do with some of their songs being left alone because I think they're just great as they are, even with the production in the 80s, because the production was quite good for them. It wasn't like their whole 80s was full of bad production. It was good. But um, In God We Trust could definitely do with, a, yeah. you know, that album itself. Mm -hmm. and, um, and even the newer stuff, you know, the Reborn stuff and the Murder of Our Pride stuff could do with a, a revamp for me. Yeah. But some of that some of that other stuff could do with being left alone. But um, oh, yeah, I totally agree with you there. I think that's the most improvement that could be made is that In God We Trust album with a redone. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, some really, really good songs on that album. Just, just need a little bit, bit beefing up with the production. But okay, yeah, yeah invitation only. Good call there, Lee. Great song. Rex, your number ten. Um, my number ten is the Valley. Um, I've always loved that song too. It's really heavy in the verses. Another thing that really gets me about that the the drums really sound good on that track. Um, also the production. Um, so the, I just, um, yeah, I can always listen to that song. And of course we know it's based on, um, the 23rd chapter of Psalms and just, just another great song from Striper. Yeah. I don't think you'll get any argument. That's a great song, Rex. Um, so my number 10, my number 10 guys, uh, we, we went to where our central, oh, 
My number 10 is the one. <laughs> Another excellent, uh, classic uh, sounding modern power ballad. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome atmospheric solo. Uh, it does this pull away from the chorus. When, and <laughs> that's, that's just a terrific solo. I love the, that delivery of that. So uh, our central character has gone to his girl uh, and we'll say spouse. And he was telling her, you know, hey, look, you know, you, you took my life from next to nothing. When I was down and things were rough, here is continued restoration. He's telling her lyrically, as the song says, you still move me. You will always be the one. So, you know, a little more of the continued restoration there. Our central character is doing what he should to his significant other. Number 11, Mark. All right, we're getting into the nitty gritty here now. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got. All right, the title track, The Fallen. That's another one that's got a that, that heavy, dirty sounding riff to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pickles. He's not really known as a, a screamer, um, but the way he screams, the chorus on this, it's kind of a different vocal style for him. Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's as good a crooner as anybody out there, but he can scream with the best of them. Oh, yeah. Just the way he screams or yells, however you want to put it, the, the chorus. Um, just kind of a different, slightly different sound for them. Uh, but again, a very heavy sound. Uh, I just, yeah, I think, I love think that about that. Fallen, Mark. There's Fallen, Saved by Love, Pride, yeah. and Michael, let's yeah. loosen all those. Yeah, yeah, he put he put some grit in his voice. You know, I, I love the way his voice has seasoned over the years. Uh, I love the way his voice has has it's aged very well, it's seasoned very well. And yeah, he, he's got some grit in his voice now, and he he uses it at the right time. You know? I think that grit really first came into play and was noticeable. I think Lee and I were mentioning the other day on Against the Law. I think that was kind of the yeah the starting point of, of where he's at vocally today, you know, right. the grit plus still the stratospheric vocals. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mark. You know about that certain style he's using on that? I was going to say, because he done he started doing that on, I think, the two middle albums, the, the newer ones, so Fallen and Goddamn Evil. Definitely using that scream type right. thing. Right. He, hasn't, he didn't do it on the last album, did he? I don't no. believe he did, yeah. Yeah, I so it's like, I'm just wondering why, because it was like he was experimenting with it. Perhaps he, perhaps he doesn't like it himself. I, I don't know, but um, I think you're right. It's, it's a cool sound. It's different, but um, I don't know why he didn't use it on the last one. I was expecting him to, to tell you the truth, but um, yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, you okay. know, Striper, they've never shied away. Michael's always said, you know, that their influences range from Judas Priest. Uh, to Black Sabbath, to Journey and Sticks. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe for a while we were kind of in that power metal territory, uh, you know, especially like on the Fallen album, say. And I think now we're kind of back maybe at a at a mid ground between that the the metal and the melodic, yeah. you know, yeah. with uh, even the Devil Believes. So, um, what was your choice, Lee? What was your number eleven? So my number 11, oh. that's all right. I think it's been chosen a few times, um, it's Pride. Yeah. So yeah, you're right about that dirty riff. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it sounds like really down-tuned, yeah. you know, heavy. I don't know if it is that down-tuned. I don't really know a lot about guitars, to tell you the truth, but it sounds even more deeper than any other riff they sort of done. It's a great song. Um, that's my number 11. Everything's been said about that one. Anyway, Pride, that's my number 11. That's a good one. Rex, what's your number 11, buddy? Um, a ballad, and, and like Lee said, this song, we've talked about it a lot, but uh, yeah, one of their best ballads, Can't Live Without Your Love. Um, you know, just, yeah, a great, great song. Great ballad. Just, um, 
Yeah. You can't hardly top that one. Nope. That's a good choice. Good choice all day long. Uh, guys, my number 11, uh, y'all have mentioned this one a couple times, uh, No More Hell to Pay. Another great mid-tempo rocker. Like, you know, Lee's, I know Lee is especially fond of that, that style that Striper does. Um, so with No More Hell to Pay, there's this, with our central character in my running storyline that I've kind of discovered, there's a resolve with God and there's restoration in this person's being now. Uh, this problem presented itself. He was, uh, he listened to the Holy Spirit. He, he was repentant and obedient and he made things right uh, with his, uh, his spouse or his significant other. And so now we have this resolve with God and restoration. He has, like the lyrics say, I am taking it a day at a time and I don't care what the doubting voices say. You have given me a gift I won't deny, and you're offering a better world to come. That's what some of the lyrics are saying in this song. So there's this resolve as he has done what he needed to do and seeing the restoration in his relationship. Uh, so there we go. That's my number 11. No more hell to pay. And back to you, Mr. Mark, number 12. Old Winchester. <laughs> Okay, now I have reached the top of the mountain, Yahweh. Yep. <laughs> um, my all-time favorite striker song. Uh, I, I, if I had ranked this in order of preference, that definitely would have been at the top of my list. Um, epic just does not even seem like a strong enough word. Um, I mentioned in Lee's video that if somebody came to me that had never heard of a heavy metal song in their life, and they wanted to to experience the the brilliance of what heavy metal can be. I would I would pull out Master of Puppets by Metallica, and I would pull out Yahweh by Strike. Yeah, um, just absolutely brilliant. Um, the way they transition in that song, just so heavy. Uh, and let's be honest, the subject matter is very heavy. And you know, for anybody who question whether Christianity is a proper subject for heavy metal. I mean, it doesn't get any more heavy than the crucifixion. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, this song just, it just, I don't think they'll ever top it in my, in my view. Uh, I know Lee thinks they have. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's my pinnacle for Striker. Oh, yeah. Man, excellent choice, Mark. Certainly. Uh, epic song. Mr. Lee, you're number 12, buddy. So my number 12, going back to the ballads, um, to my last one of my best of, if you like, and that's Heaven. Yeah. Rex has already chosen. I love it. It's got that sort of feel of, that song has got those sort of guitar <laughs> licks that reminds me of the stuff on No More Hell to Pay. That sort of lead melody over that chorus reminds me, of, for some reason, of you know, the first couple of tracks on No More Hell to Pay. Mm -hmm. It's got that lovely yeah. little bit of melody that, oh, oh man, it's a great song. Heaven is uh, my number 12, mate. And you're talking about the bits, Lee, that uh, da 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 da. Well, I can't even do it. I mean, I can't get it. I, I know what you're talking about. There's an atmosphere. Yeah, there is. There is. And it just reminds me of like those little lead bits, like I said, in probably especially No More Hell to Pay, the actual track. Mm hmm. No, I know it's a ballad, but I don't know. They've got a, a way of writing those guitar melodies, and they? It's just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew... I remember Rex always liking that song, and it is a good song. Good pick. Um, Rex, what's your number 12, buddy? Um, well, now on my list, I'm up to the newest album, Even the Devil Believes, and um, my number 12 is Let Him In. Just, um, you know, another mid-tempo... You know, just good rock and roll song, a good, you know, just toe tapping song. I, you know, just, um, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I really, I've always liked that song from the first time I've heard it too. I think, um, I, what, sorry, mate. I was going to say, I think the, uh, the vocal in that from my, Michael Sweet in that chorus, well, all the way through that song, I think it's the most 
it sounds like he's just so like um, got so much energy in that song. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not in my. I don't want to give too much away. It's not in my actual list, but he brings so much energy to that song in his vocal delivery. You know, like he's really. You know, when you can really tell if someone's really getting into the song. That one is especially like that. I think. It's great. Well, vocal. You've hit the nail on the head on that, I think, Lee. And I think maybe that's why I like it. You can just sense that energy like you're talking yeah. about in that. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. And, and to concur with both of you guys, for me, the song Let Him In, which I really appreciate and enjoy, that song has a bounce to mm -hmm. it. The way that the, the melody guitar-wise is, it has a bounce that, like that toe tapping you're talking about, Rex, you know, a lot. I don't think there's any other Striper song, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a bounce like no other and let him in. And that's why I really appreciate that song. Yeah, definitely, yeah. My number 12, guys, uh, not a lot needs to be said about it. We know it, we love it. Uh, I think we all might have included it, maybe. Uh, the Valley, that cool heavy groove, that's all I'll say about it. So uh, this is kind of the, uh, you know, the, the outcome of this restoration in this storyline that I had talked about previously with no more hell to pay. Um, and like you've already said it, Rex, you know, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, Psalm 23. Um, this guy knows now, hey, you know, whatever hardship might come my way, I'm not going to fear it. I've been through it. I've made it through. God's brought me through going to keep pressing on. So there you go. That's the valley. Brings us to number 13, guys. Mr. Mark. I'll tell you what, he makes it a lot more exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like we're winning a prize. <laughs> For God and rock and roll. Oh, um, nice. Nice. That is such a throwback song yeah. for this newest album. Um, to me, that song sounds like it could have fit easily or fit very well on uh, Against the Wall. You know, they were going for that more stripped down sound on that album. And uh, this song, the first time I heard it, um, it just, it, it got me the very first time. It's, it's definitely got that old school uh, rock and roll kind of vibe. Um, very crunchy guitar sound and uh, uh, to steal Kent's words, a very throwback guitar solo in that song. Um, I don't hear many other people talk about this particular song in this album. It seems to be one of the um, deeper cuts for the, uh, anyway, just don't hear a lot of talk about it, but that's, that's one of my favorites on that album. And I completely understand why. Uh, I can't say too much at the moment, but I understand why. Good, <laughs> good pick, buddy. Uh, Lee, you're number 13. My number 13 is Revelation. Man, I just, uh, I'm trying to think of a better, it's one of the best songs they've ever started an album with. And it, and I think I've said this to you before, and it shouldn't work because it's one of those, my lovely medium paced favorite sort of songs but it's in a strange place on the album but it fits perfectly and i don't even know why but i just love it i just think it's like you know it's just got such a feeling to that song and I, you're right as well i think of that song and no more hell to pay together i know that they are together but I, they, they come as one it's really strange and it could have probably gone around the other way as well you they probably could have started the album with no more hell to pay you can imagine that opening riff, can't you, at the beginning of the album, you know? Either of them songs are fantastic. But, um, Revelation, I just I just love it. And it's got those melodies again, them guitar melodies that they do, which are sort of melancholy in a way, sort of a sad sort of feel to them. It's a great song, man. Revelation's my number 13. Yep. It's been on my list. I understand why it's there on yours, Lee. Great song. Rex, your number 13, buddy. Um, my number 13 is, um, I feel, the best Striper song that they've ever done, and that's, uh, I'm sure Lee will agree with me, that's Do Unto Others. Um, yeah, it, 
it's just, yeah, it's just awesome. We've already talked about it, but um, I just, you can't top that. I would consider that personally. Um, I would consider that their, their fourth album in their catalog after, you know, YHWH and previously that, uh, To Hell with the Devil and then Soldiers before that. But I think Do Unto Others is actually kind of like their, their fourth, maybe, you know, uh, my number 13, guys, uh, is How to Fly. Uh, it's different. Uh, mellow, rocking groove. But I love this, this mellow plane that we're on. And indeed, we're on this mellow plane on this soaring atmosphere. That's where How to Fly puts me. It puts me in a different zone than any other Striker song. Uh, I love the, uh, the backing keys that aren't overbearing in it. Um, the bridge, uh, it has that Queen-esque ELO vibe to it. Great crisp and cutting solo, which soars as well, perfect for the song. This is in here, guys, for me, because there is no other Striper song like this song, uh, as far as the, the, the sum total of what it does. Within this storyline, it's placed here because uh, lyrically, it's, like I said, it's got this soaring vibe. It's kind of like mounting up with wings as eagles in, from, from the book of Isaiah. Um, this is God reaffirming his love for his child and, and, and lifting him. You know, hey, I'm proud of you for listening to me, for making this ride over here where you needed to. Uh, now you're reaping the, the reward of just listening to me and your relationships improve. So the lyrics say, you can't stop love. It flows forever from above and frees you when you're bound. And that's what happened to our single character. He was formerly bound by pride, but he listened to the Lord and God freed him and uh, restored this relationship with his spouse. So that's where we're at in our story with How to Fly with, with mine, my little concept I got going, bringing us to number 14. Any rebuttals against how to fly being in my list, guys? <laughs> no, no, not definitely not. <laughs> okay, y'all just talked about this one a minute ago, Revelation. Um, yeah, that's another one that I don't think they could improve on at all. Um, like I previously said, God kind of paved the way for what was coming on this next album, and I was a little bit. I don't want to say apprehensive, but a little bit nervous as I put that disc in for the first time. Okay, what am I going to hear? Are they going to continue with this brilliance that they just teased us with with the song God? Or are they going to drift back to the to the reborn kind of formula? But as soon as Revelation kicks in, I was just so relieved. I said, okay, they are, they are definitely back. They're back where they need to be. They're on the right road now. Uh, just a, a brilliant song. Uh, I love that, that echoey vocal effect they put in it. Um, again, a, a mid-tempo that, like Lee said, not they usually start off an album with the, the faster track, and this was kind of an odd one to start it off with, but it, it definitely worked. Uh, just love that song. If some of you um, said the other day, Kent, as well, um... I love that riffing in that chorus when it is it's, um, when it says there's a revelation coming down for you wherever the lyrics are and that da, 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 that, yeah. that riffing man it's just like simple parts like that in a song yeah will just make it isn't it yeah man curiously Mark just a question of curiosity for me you mentioned you know your initial trepidation when you first popped the disc in okay. What is this revelation? What is this song that's about to be revealed to me in this album? So that same year that No More Hell to Pay was released, before that was released, we got Second Coming. I'm just curious what you thought about uh, Blacking and Bleeding from Inside Out. Um, yeah, I forgot about those songs, to be perfectly honest, when I was getting my list together. Um, I like them. I don't think they would have 
made it to my top 15. Uh, I think Bleeding from the Inside Out, I like a little bit better than Black. And, Me as well. Uh, yeah, those, those two songs would have fit very well on either Reborn or Murder by Pride, I thought. Uh, okay. Yeah, I totally forgot about those two. Well, uh, between between the song God and uh, No More Hell to Pay the album, with those two songs, that did they still make you feel, hey, okay, things are things are still okay here, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, again, they, I think those would have fit better on No More yeah, Hell to Pay Pride. on uh, Murder by Pride or Reborn than the later. Um, yeah, I hadn't even thought about those two, to be honest with you. They don't. They don't rank that highly yeah. in my rankings. They're credible songs, but not, you know, not where where I want them to be or expect them to be at this point. I got you. I got you. Well, Lee, speaking of rankings and such, we're on your number fourteen, buddy. I think I've got the one. I think everyone's had this now. The Valley. The Valley. So I mean. I you know, it's great. Good, good video as well. You know, another video that they done that was quite cool. Um, yeah. And that's the one that had Michael in the seat. He had about six of him, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And the pews there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. I just, I just love it. I think it's one of the. You don't realise about that fall or not? How many great sort of? I think it was one of them albums that had some really brilliant tracks that stood out. You know, it's a bit different than, you know, like the new one, the last one, for instance, which was very, you know, all top tracks. I think Fallen was a good album, but it had some real standout ones against others that were not so like that. But um, I think that was one of the best ones on it. The Valley, great track. Yep. I don't think anybody would argue. I think it's that's that was Mark's top draw right there. Um, Anyway, yes, great song, great song. Rex, you're number 14, buddy. I've got that wrong, actually. That's off God, Goddamn Evil. I'm yeah, an idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's all good, Lee. It's all good. <laughs> um, my number 14 is another ballad, and, uh, you know, I would be hard-pressed to say which one I liked better between that and Can't Live Without Your Love, but this I pray. Um, just another great ballad with uh, – you know, has a little bit of that Bon Jovi-ish um, music, musical style to it also, but definitely another great top-notch ballad. Yep. No argument here. Uh, all right, guys, my number 14, I'm sorry. Uh, my number 14, guys, is Legacy. I chose a legacy. I don't think anybody else, y'all correct me, if somebody else has said legacy, let me know. Uh, legacy is in mind because it's just a, another, it's a powerhouse of a full throttle rocker. Uh, those signature screams at the onset. Michael has this vocal snarl in that song. The way he's singing that stuff, um, just, just a unique snarl to his voice, which I really dig. So this also fits uh, my next in the, my next the last song, because in this song Legacy, now our central character he is reflecting on on his life after this turmoil. He was in in this turmoil, this caught in this web of pride, uh, having a a row with his spouse, if you will. Um, but now he's made it through. He's reflecting on his life after that turmoil. And the lyrics say in Legacy, will we be humbled far beyond our pride? So there's this running threat. Will we be humbled far beyond our pride? Or are we in for a rough ride? What's our legacy? So he's, our central character has recognition and now he's in this stage of reflection on what he's been through. All right, that's my number 14, Legacy. You guys want to comment on that song about any any of its... Uh, uh, I love it. It's a good song, man. It's a great song. All right. That one almost made my list. <laughs> All right, guys. So that was my number 14. I think, Mark, we're up to your number 15, buddy. Yeah, I'm into the bottom of the box now. So uh, That's another one I don't think anybody's mentioned. Sympathy. Um, 
another highly overlooked track. Um, great guitar. I love the, the twin guitar interplay there in that one. Um, just a, another great song that you don't hear a whole lot about. But kind of that one actually, that one in Legacy, I was battling myself which one to pick. Um, those are two very similar songs to me. And uh, simply yeah. just, just very slightly worn out. But yeah. Love if, those. if memory serves correctly for me, Mark, I, I believe you're in good company because I think Dave Mustaine chose that song when Michael was talking to Dave Mustaine and he listened to it, to the album before it was released. Uh, Dave said, here's your single right here. And it was simple. Okay. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yep. Mr. Lee, what's your number 15? So I'm closing with uh, Yahweh. So the, I, I think, I think albums if should always close with something a bit epic. And it's easily the most epic song they've done. Yeah. You know, and um, I don't know, it's right up there. I think it's my number two pick of Striper songs in general. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing song. And I do think one day they're going to do one of these 12, 13, 14 minute songs. I'm sure they are. <laughs> and like I keep saying, this is proof that I think they could do something and make it interesting enough to be one of those epic long songs. And if they do do that song, that was down to me, by the way. <laughs> I asked. You planted that. the seed. Yeah. I just, want, I just want it on the on the lyric on the um, notes on the album. You know, this was down to Lee. That's all I want. But. Oh, oh, to Lee. Yes. Well, he is doing it. his best to will this into the, you know, into the striper cosmos for it to happen. You the know? only thing, the only thing I would say is lyrically, obviously, you know what the song's about. That probably would have been a, a real good song lyrically to choose for one of their epic thirteen. You know, the subject matter would have been a, for a 12, 13, 40 minute song. Are you saying the subject matter is you? No, 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 no. You're talking about the crucifixion, right, Lee, in that? Yeah. I say, you yeah. could write a song about me if he wants, but that would be cool. But, um, yeah, I think the crucifixion itself, that would make a long, like an epic song that, you know, that, that to write, like a long song like that. That would have been a good subject matter for Michael Sweet to write about it. But obviously he's done it now but you know well, but he's got plenty of other stuff to write about he <laughs> the, the, obvi the obvious subject matter would be the resurrected well there you go yeah like the answer like the part two but make yeah. it about 13 minutes long that'd be perfect yeah and listen i'm not, watching yeah i don't like not every long song you know resonates with me i don't like them all but you know, there's been some from bands that they're my favourite songs, and yeah. it has to be a real good one. Yeah. And I'm sure they, I'm sure they could do it. I think that the proof's in the pudding there with that Yahweh. I really do think that. Yeah. There you go. That's my closer. It's a great song, and I can see why you would want it to be your closer. Um, you know, because of its epicness. Yeah. Um, very good choice, Rex. What's your final song? Um, well, mine is one that Mark picked, and, and I agree with Mark. Uh, another song that I think just gets overlooked, but I think, one, because there's so many great songs from that album, but my number 15 is For God and Rock and Roll. Um, that, that is another just great rock song um, that, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think just because there's so many, that whole album is just incredible. I, I think, you know, it just, for whatever reason, it just gets overlooked a little bit. Well, I concur with you, and I also concur with Mark, because my final choice is For God and Rock and Roll. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I chose that song on its own merit, but when I did choose it, I'm like, wouldn't that be great as far as being a part of a title for a modern-day Vesta? I mean, it fits perfectly. Um, I chose for God and rock and roll, and it uh, because it's anthemic, 
it does have, like you said, uh, Mark, in Rex, you know, uh, it's got that cool retro feel. Yeah. And, you know, that guitar solo, I'm not saying it's, it doesn't, a guitar solo doesn't have to be shredding to be dynamic. Right. It needs to fit the song perfectly. Right. And when you think about um, that solo, it's so crisp. And when it first kicks in, I mean, you know, and it's just grooving. I don't know if that's Oz or Michael, but whoever laid it down, it's just perfect. And, I, and of course, there's some give and take, too. There's alternating solos in there. It has the perfect solo for the song. And I just love its retro feel. It was a different vibe for, for Striper with, with, with that. Um, now, uh, to, our, to our end to the ending of the story, uh, the previous song was Legacy. Our central character was reflecting that legacy. And here's the conclusion of that legacy. Here's the lyrics. We're born to rock, created for love, but we've got to answer the call. And that call was this, uh, you know, this uh, revelation that was put on him about this problem of pride. Okay, so it's all coming together. But we've got to answer the call. And then he says, never let the devil claim your soul. Raise your hands for God and rock and roll. And that's the legacy, you know, and that's kind of bringing the conclusion of the matter to this, uh, to this best of collection here. So uh, that's my number. That's my final song, guys. And let me propose a question. Of course, everybody, nobody is wrong in their choices. This is our personal best of. Here's a question I'd like to propose, though, guys. There were a lot of the same choices uh, between our respective lists. So I think if there really were to be a best of collection feature officially for the Striper, I think between what we've done, guys, uh, with a lot of these similar songs, I think you can actually see an official list shaping, if you know what I mean. Uh, thoughts? <laughs> well, what I noticed is between the four of us, five of the songs came from the album No More Hell to Pay. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know... I, I know, I, I, I think, Lee, I don't know if that's your favorite album or next to favorite album, but that just tells you um, how great of an album that was. And, and you know, that kind of was their, quote, comeback album, you know, these last four. Um, so I found that interesting, just kind of listening to everyone's choices. Yeah, I mean, I... Just speaking, just speaking for myself, I, my list was strictly songs that I like. Sure. Some of these I know would not be on the, you know, the right. hypothetical album we're talking about. I know Yahweh would be on that album. I know No More Hell to Pay would be on that album. But, you know, I doubt Something or Fallen, just to name a couple, would be on that album. These are just songs from the recent output that, that I go back to on regular Sure. Time. I mean, I, I only chose Four Leaf Clover was the only song I chose off of the first. Apart from that, it was, oh, and God off of the covering. So I only had one song off Murder by Pride, which was Four Leaf Clover. And I had God off the covering. All the rest of them were off the last four albums. Right. To tell you the truth, God was a definite. Four Leaf Clover was close. I nearly like chose another one off the last four albums. I think that's how strong those albums are. Agreed. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, I think they're all near enough greatest hits. Those last four albums, it's, you know, especially the last one, especially No More Hell to Pay and even The Devil Believes. I think them that them two are just amazing. Yeah. No, you're right about that, though, mate. No More Hell to Pay. That's my like second favorite Striper album ever. It probably. To tell you the truth, you know, when you're thinking about it more and more, it might even be my favourite, you know, because things do change. But um, such a great album, that is. And it's funny, it's funny enough, the 
the most songs I actually chose were off of Fallen. Like I said, I think that's them two albums that Goddamn Evil and The Fallen have got some real highlights, but I think it's what backed them up wasn't as good as No More Hell to Pay and even The Devil Believes, where they were from the start to finish great albums, you know, in my opinion, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if y'all want to go around the horn really quick, um, and we'll, we're, you know, we're reaching the, the conclusion of the matter here, but um, if y'all want to just shout out a couple near misses, did y'all have any near misses? Yeah, uh, I, I feel bad that I did not include a, a ballad, but just, just for the record, my ballad would have been the one. Uh, <laughs> I narrowed it down to 16 songs, and I just had to, had to put <laughs> something out. Um, so the one, uh, Legacy, Renewed, Lost off of Goddamn Evil, The Calling, and King of Kings off of Fallen, uh, Even the Devil Believes, Make Love Great Again, and Four Leaf Clover were my very near misses. Good songs. Great. Good songs. Lee, what were yours? I haven't got any written down, but off the top of my head, because I was fighting with this one, was marching into battle. I just love that song. That's pure power metal, that one. Yeah. Um, and I haven't really got any off the middle two, uh, the recent ones, I mean. Sorry, I haven't got any. So I've got marching into battle off No More Hell to Pay. There's loads off of the new album. You know, um, For God on Rock and Roll, Make Love Great Again, Blood From Above, you know, they're the ones that were very close, you know. Yeah. That whole album's great. You know, they that's what I'm saying, they're so consistent, that last album, that a lot of them can nearly make this list. You know? <laughs> yep. The only one I wouldn't have considered probably, and it's not a bad song, is Middle Finger Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the only one I would say I would never have considered to be on this list. But yeah. all them under ten songs, is it? The other ten. Mm -hmm. Very close to being on the. Oh yeah, that's how good that good that album is. Certainly, Rex. What about you? Any near misses? Yeah, just a couple. Um, you know, another song that you don't hear a lot about from Fallen is uh, "Love You Like I Do." Um, I would have picked that, and then, you know, pretty much I'm just going to make a blanket statement. A any song from Even the Devil Believes. I mean, you know, you really can't go wrong with that album as a whole. So that that's kind of my honorable mentions. Sounds good, buddy. I had four. Uh, they were on my list at one point, but then when I got to jockeying things and all that, Murder by Pride was on there. Uh, it's a near miss. Uh, Saved by Love, uh, near miss. The Calling was a near miss. I think that has a great catchy chorus. It just kind of overlooked the song. And This I Pray was a near miss uh, for me. So, uh, guys, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to have Scripture close out like we always do. But, um, well, let me just do that. Scripture close out, guys. Um, what made me think of this Scripture, this was picked due to the working album title or our pretend uh, modern-day best of for God in rock and roll. Uh, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart is working for the Lord not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. As a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And that's from Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Again, I just picked it because, and I think I might have done that before actually, but just thinking about the working album title, For God and Rock and Roll, just made me think of that. So uh, guys, overall in general, uh, closing thoughts, Mark, Lee, Rex. I just appreciate you having me on. It's been a blast. Uh, like I said, I, I had to took a little thinking to, to whittle down to 15 songs. It's always hard when you're dealing with one of your favorite bands and such a huge, you know, output that has been a part of your life for so long. Uh, just enjoyed it and appreciate you having me on. You bet, buddy. And, you know, again, it, you seem like, 
like an old friend, so to speak, after watching me with so many episodes with Lee. I mean, it's all evenly both. It's just all completely natural. And we knew we wanted to have you on, so thank you for honoring us. I've, I've, got, to, I've got to publicly thank Lee, too. I mean, he, is, he has opened up a whole new world to me. When he first invited me to join him on that Striker video, I was so apprehensive because I'm not a uh, I'm not a technological kind of guy. At all. I didn't even know how to do a Zoom call. Uh, he had to walk me through how to even do that. I was so nervous on that first one, and uh, somebody called me out. I kept slapping my table. <laughs> I told him it was just nervous energy, but uh, I've enjoyed it, and uh, he just opened up a whole new world to me. And, my, my thanks are eternal to you, Lee. Yeah. Closing thoughts, Lee? Well, that, that means such a lot. It really does. And I mean, I, I meant what I said earlier on. This is, uh, you do become friends, you know, big time like this, you know, and people would say it's just ridiculous, you know, and I, I probably would have been the first one to say that years ago. But, you know, you, you're talking to each other, whether it's over the video or not, isn't it? It's, you're, you're still talking to each other, you're having banter, you're saying, you know, I really appreciate what Mark says. And he's been a, you know, since he was on, people mentioned straight away it was what it was, you know, listening to Mark. He's, he's a really interesting guy to, to listen to. And, and that, that's, that's the cool thing, isn't it? We're only having a conversation like we're in the pub together or whatever, you know, just talking about music. That's all you're doing. And, um, it's amazing how interesting the conversations and people getting involved from the outside comments under your videos. And I think it's great, man. And um, there's no choice at the moment, is there? Anyway, you know, even if you could see each other, you, you know, I, I hope it happens one day. But um, it's been excellent. And thanks for having me on again, because I love coming on here. And yeah. like I said, it's always a pleasure being not hosting. It's so relaxing and taking your turn and all that. I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. So um, thanks for all you guys. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and we always love having you on, Lee. And uh, What do you think about a guy, guy though, Mark and Rex, that has you on his program and he tells you what it's about and then like right as soon as you go on, he goes, he goes all right, mate, I'm going to let you introduce this topic and tell him what we're doing. I'm like, uh, our least favorite Striper song. I mean, I felt like you know under so much pressure. You know? Talk about getting thrown under the bus. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, but look, I knew if anyone could handle it, it'd be you, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You know, was... you've, just, you've just written a concept album. I mean, <laughs> you can handle anything. Rex, closing thoughts, buddy. Um, you know, yeah, I just kind of want to go with what Lee has said. And uh, well, first, I just want to thank you guys for coming on. And, you know, people might not understand this, but yeah, I mean, this camaraderie and brothers, I, I just feel, you know, so close to you guys, you know, and, you know, this is the same way me and Kent met, you know, we've never met in person. And um, I just think it's just awesome that, we can do this. I mean, you know, me, Kent, and Mark, we're all in different parts of the United States, and Lee's clear across the pond. I mean, who would have thought 20 years ago, you know, you could be doing this and become good friends with someone, um, you know, so uh, this is just awesome, and I want to do another one of these again with you guys. Um, I also just want to plug Striper and just have everyone try to support the band as much as they can and, and buy stuff from their website. And uh, we just pray, continue prayers for Oz and just uh, hope the best for him and uh, his recovery. And uh, we just, uh, that's kind of what, what I'm thinking. Guys, it's been an honor, a great episode. The time has flown by. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And if you just want to hang around for one second after our official closeout, we'll do that. So, uh, say goodbye to everybody and thank you for watching. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye. Cheers, guys.
Yeah.